In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to create hardwood inlays using your V-Bits. It's way easier than you think, and VCarve Pro can do it in minutes. I'm not going to waste your time with a 37 minute tutorial. This one's pretty quick. In about three minutes, I'll walk you through exactly how to set it up in the software. And if you wanna see how it all turned out, stick around for the last two minutes for the final results. If you already know what pocket depth glue gap and surface gap are, then you're already way ahead of the game. The main thing to keep in mind is that VCarve Pro assumes both pieces of your stock are the exact same dimension. In reality, that's not always the case. It really depends on your project. But as long as you know how to account for that, the software will always produce both the pocket and the plug at the push of a button. All right, let's go. I'm going to be dropping my inlay right on top of my laser fill. So I have the laser paths added to another layer. Don't worry about that. This is all about the inlay Timbers. So VCarve Pro has this really cool thing. It's called VCarve Inlay Toolpath. This thing is literally gonna take care of everything for you. All you have to do is decide what you're going to inlay. And as long as you have a vector for it, it's going to go ahead and calculate everything for you, including the mirroring of the plug piece that needs to happen. All of it happens in the same shot. So I already have my vector set up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the inlay toolpath. Now up here, it has already accounted for everything for you. All you have to do is input the values. You have pocket depth, glue gap, and surface gap. And there's a cool little image here that kind of, self, kind of explains what that is. You can get a good idea of what exactly is gonna happen here. For today's inlay, I'm gonna be using my quarter inch Jenny for clearing. And then I'm going to use my 3 8 inch groovy 60 degree V-bit, which is also from Cadence Manufacturing. These are really great bits. I wanted to go ahead and point out that the size for my pocket side of things is going to be 14.875 with a height of 3.125. Um, the plug side can be larger than the piece where the pocket is going into, but you have to make sure that it is not smaller. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I would advise having two identical pieces. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Obviously for an inlay, you want contrasts like walnut on maple or maple and walnut or maple in cherry. For the two pieces I'm using today, I'm gonna to be inlaying maple inside cherry. So for my pocket depth, I'm thinking that 0.196 is gonna be just fine. Glue gap is 0.075, and this is just a little bit of space where your glue is gonna go down so that way you have enough space so that the glue doesn't squeeze out and you're actually having enough adhesion in there. I want a little bit of a surface gap at 0.15, so that way when I come back and do the finishing pass on this, it's going to give me a little bit of space so that way I can carve off the bulk of the piece and then go ahead and sand it down with precision so that way I'm not messing up the laser engraving that I was talking about earlier. So I have my bits preset here. I have the quarter inch in clearance tools and then I have the V bit up here in tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on calculate. Now, sometimes your clearance tool isn't gonna fit where it needs to fit. For instance, this Jenny compression bit is not going to fit in the V bit pocket. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and delete that later. Click on OK. Now, as you can see, it's done all the work for you and it's already mirrored the piece. You have a pocket toolpath and a plug toolpath all ready to go. See them all here on the right side. If you go ahead and uncheck all of these, we'll go ahead and get them simulated. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do on one piece is we're gonna clear it off for the plug. So let's see how that looks. All right, that's great. This is the quarter inch Jenny compression bit doing that work. And then we're gonna come back in with the, with the V bit and it's gonna create the rest of that plug there. You can see here on the inlay clear, there's not enough room for the bit, so it did not calculate that. Uh, we'll go ahead and reset the preview, and this is what the pocket side of things is gonna look like, which it looks pretty good to me, so I think we'll go ahead and take these files downstairs and get it carved out. And then later we'll go and take the piece of maple and glue it into the piece of cherry. We'll go ahead and do a clearance tool path on top of that, run it through the drum sander, and then it's all good to go.
So this was so precise that I don't even need to hit it with the drum sander. I'm just gonna sand it with the regular 220. I did have a little bit of chip out here and for that I would recommend making your pocket a little bit deeper than I did. I'm just gonna create a glue sawdust compound and get that plugged and then it'll look fine.